Ooh, we got a windy one today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is sponsored by EuroTackle, where you can go to eurotackle.com, use promo code Flop and Crappie, and get yourself 10% off. Today, we're going to be using the EuroTackle Leech. Got a bunch of different color patterns today. Uh, it's got kind of this black with some blue specks in it. We got pink, chartreuse, and white. Those three colors, pink, chartreuse, and white, you're pretty much golden for catching crappie and bluegill pretty much anywhere throughout the U.S. Uh, but the reason they're called the leech because they also have this black pattern. We're going to drop down on some cribs today. Coming up on the end of February here. See if we can catch some bluegill, maybe a random crappie or two. I see a couple crappie on the screen. Start recording that. There's a couple crappie down there, but mostly bluegill. So we're going to drop down see if we can catch a bunch of bluegill today. Maybe keep a few for the frying pan later tonight. But this is basically the setup I've been using all ice fishing. 32 inch ACC, ooh, ACC crappie sticks rod. It's a PC Fun Carbon X reel. Oh, we coming in, coming in hot. He wanted it, here he comes again. Yep, got him. First, oh, disappointment. Right out of the gate. It's okay, we'll drop back down there, catch another one. This is the PC Fun Carbon at carbon ice axe reel, inline reel. I really like the trigger mechanism on it. Three pound monofilament ice line, and then I'm going with a 132nd tungsten jig attached, and then hooked on there is that black leech you guys just saw. So we're gonna drop down again, see if we can catch them. Unlike that, where we just lose the fish halfway up. Typically, if you got a tougher bite, we got a front moving in tonight. Um, it's supposed to be actually a pretty bad snowstorm tomorrow. But typically when you got a front moving in, you want to downsize your baits a little bit. It's going to help when they're short striking it. Oh man, here he comes. Oh, come on, dude. He's going to come back. Yeah. Keep raising above their head. They'll get interested. Here comes one from the left. That's a good, that's a good gill. If that other bluegill gets the heck out of the way. Ooh, we got a windy one today, too. That front's moving in quick. Just keep it above their head and you should be able to get a bite. Man, they are short striking it, too. Kind of getting into that doldrum period of end of February, though. Come on. Yep, there he is. Got him that time. That was a no doubt. That's a good gill too. That right there is probably a solid eight inch gill. I'm not gonna keep you, I don't think. He, he inhaled it too, look at that. I might have to go get my pliers for this guy. In fact, I am. Let's uh, quick throw him on the bump board here. I'll grab my pliers. Oh yeah, he's eight. Part of his fin got bit off, but that is an eight inch bluegill right there. All right, cool. Good way to start off the, the afternoon. I'm gonna go get a player's, unless I think I might be able to pop it out. See you, buddy. There he goes. I'm fishing about 17, 18 feet of water, so shouldn't have too much problem with uh, barrel trauma. Typically when you fish for bluegills or crappie deeper in about 25 to 30 feet, kind of that range, or deeper than that. That's when you run into problems. Their air bladders inflate, but fishing in 18, 17, 18, 19 feet, we should be okay. The crazy thing is, when you're using live scope or something, this is kind of what you're seeing on live scope. Just a bunch of fish on some brush piles, or in this case, cribs. Oh, there's a crappie. And when you don't catch them, this is what they're doing. They're not even looking at your jig half the time. There might be two or three looking at your jig, but the rest of them are just kind of sitting there. It just amazes me that there can be that many fish down there. There's a bluegill less than six inches away from the bait and it's not even going to turn on it. But winter doldrums. If this was summertime and that bait was that close to that bluegill, for sure they'd all be attacking it. Here we go, come on. There he is. 
I don't think he's, he's that big, but it is a bluegill right there. Bluegill number two. Let's see, buddy. So let's talk about this location of where these these brush piles are. I'm not going to give specific waypoints to them, but they're on a steep drop off. Typically during the winter pattern, they're going to if you can find any type of cover, whether it's tree laydowns, trees, vertical timber brush piles, rock piles on the edge of a drop off, you're definitely gonna find a bunch of different species of fish. Tight contours means a very steep drop off and then it kind of levels out to more of a gradual grade into the basin. I'm not really on the basin. I guess you would consider this like the edge of the basin where it starts. But that's where these fish are set up. And there's a bunch of them. Yep. That's a better fish. That is a better bluegill. Yeah. That is a nice, nice bluegill. I'm gonna put him on the bump board real quick. I'm gonna guess an eight. Some pretty solid bluegill in this lake. No monsters yet, but hell yeah, he's he's eight. He's right on the nose at eight. Eight inch bluegill. Just a solid, solid fish. See you, buddy. Oh, that's a good gill. Yep, I think that's a good one. Yeah, that feels like a good gill. Oh, yes. That is a really nice one right there. These are the gills we came after today. Put him on the bump board. Is he over eight? He's right at eight again. Well, if I pinch it, he's probably gonna be eight and a quarter if I pinch the tail. Ouch. Yeah, if I if I pinch the tail there. Bump board's being slippery. He's about eight and a quarter. Just under eight and a quarter. Still a really nice gill. Seems like the ones that have that really yellow belly are those bigger fish. I'm gonna go back. See you, oh, easy. See you, buddy. Still going after the nine inch gill. And I think there's definitely nine inch fish down there. There he is. Oh my goodness, it's been an hour since I've caught one. That's a decent fish too. Not our nine inch bluegill that we came after, but these gills have just shut off almost for the last hour. So that is gonna end it for me. Go ahead, check out eurotackle.com. Use that promo code, Flop and Crappie. Get 10% off on all the plastics, uh, the entire website. I gotta load up on plastics for this next spring and summer season. So far a difficult mission, but don't worry. We got three more weekends probably of ice fishing left, so. We still got a shot at our nine plus inch gill. I don't think there's any, well, there might be a few 10 inch gills in this lake. It's just, there's a reasonable shot at a nine inch gill. So I got to travel to a different lake if I want to go after a 10. So I hope you enjoyed the little video. Cool underwater footage. Aquaview HD7i is the camera I am using. A couple people asked that in the last video. So I'll link everything in the video description. Rod, reel, line, hooks, all my equipment. But if you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Again, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one.